A good plan is the most important factor in creating a good landscape. That's because it takes most do-it-yourselfers between three and five years to finish a big landscape. Well, first of all, it takes more than just a couple of weekends. Second of all, the plants and materials alone can run into the thousands of dollars, so it gets spread out over a few years. The first consideration is the style of landscaping that will work best with your property. This house has kind of a cozy look to it, and our landscape architect has picked up on that in the design. That's where the beds have curves rather than straight lines, and where the plants seem to be placed almost at random. That's all very carefully planned, though. You'll see it come together later on the tape, but right now, let's take a look at a finished example of an informal landscape. This video shows a newly planted garden done in the English garden style. It was designed to harmonize with the architecture of the home, and it features mass plantings of shrubs and perennials with no formal borders between them. Compare that to this garden, which shows the formal style of straight lines and perfect geometrical shapes. Featured here are a garden house, patio, and concrete stairs, which create a classical garden next to the house. The highlight is an aerial hedge, which follows the arc at the end of the patio. Here the plantings seem orderly, not random, and they're closely managed and pruned to maintain the formal effect. Okay, let's assume that you've decided which styles you like best. Your next consideration is what you want your landscape to do for your house and yard, besides make it look nicer. Here's where you want to start thinking about the function you want your landscape to perform, like creating new areas for play and leisure, increasing privacy, and blocking the sun, wind, or street noise. You should also think about ways to improve the view of your house from the street by framing it better or highlighting the entryway. But don't forget about the views from inside the house. If you have large windows or French doors, think about how you can improve the views you now have through them. The same would apply if there's a porch, patio, or a deck. If there's no outdoor seating area, you might include one in your new plan and then work on the view you'd have from that area. Finally, check out the rest of your neighborhood and try to imagine how your ideas would blend in with the other yards. There's a certain value in keeping a visual continuity between the houses, so you might think twice about anything that's wildly different. In fact, you might want to incorporate some of your neighbor's ideas in your own yard to promote continuity. If you do that, then you'll be starting to think like a designer. But you also have to be thinking about some of the other materials that designers work with. The trees, shrubs, and flowers that actually make up the landscape. If you're going to plan your own landscape, you'll need a pretty good idea of which ones will work in your climate. Trees, shrubs, and flowers are all categorized by their plant hardiness, which means how well they perform in different climate extremes. North America has been divided into 10 climatic zones in the plant hardiness zone map, put out by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, with Zone 1 the coldest and Zone 10 the warmest. National plant reference guides and nursery catalogs will list the plant hardiness by zone, so once you determine the climatic zone you live in, you can figure out which of the plants will thrive in your part of North America. Your local nurseries will, of course, stock plants that are hardy to your climate. And if they do carry any non-hardy plants, they'll alert you to the special care those plants need to survive in your climate. In addition to the climate factor, there's also the sun factor for trees, shrubs, and flowers. Some need full sun, some need full shade, and they won't thrive in the opposite extreme. So plant guides and catalogs will also list the plant's sun or shade requirements, and that's something you have to consider in your planning. The catalogs and guides also list the plant size at maturity, which is critical for proper spacing on your plan and in your yard. And this catalog also lists the time of year when the flower or shrub is in bloom, and that's a consideration when you're trying to maintain color in your yard through the entire growing season. The main thing to be concerned about is what your trees, shrubs, and flowers look like. Now, if you're like me, you look through one of these catalogs, you find dozens of things that you like, and then later on you forget what they were or where you found them. So we think it's a good idea to get extra copies of the catalogs if you can and actually cut out the pictures of the plants you think might fit into your landscape. And cut out the plant descriptions, too, so you know at a glance all the important facts. This step won't really help if you're just going to put in 20 lilac shrubs, all of the same variety. But it will help you keep a range of trees, shrubs, and flowers in mind if you plan to mix quite a few into your new landscape. All right, we've got you thinking about landscape plants, styles, and functions. Now we want to turn those thoughts into a workable landscape plan. 
Before doing any drawing, you'll need to measure out the dimensions of the yard and the house, as well as any permanent features like the garage, the driveway, sidewalks, fences, patios, decks, and existing trees or shrubs you plan to keep. The next step is translating those features to paper using an eighth inch scale, which means an eighth inch on paper equals a foot out in the yard. If your drawings look a little amateurish, don't worry. Just so long as the measurements are accurate and you can read everything when you're done, that's, that's really all that matters. Let's say that you've got your yard drawn and you want to try out some ideas on your new landscape. One tip that we've learned is to use tracing paper at this point so you don't have to redraw the yard over and over again. Now what I've drawn here is a hypothetical house and yard. It might not look like your yard, but as we step through a couple of likely plans for this house, we'll highlight the basic principles you can use in your yard. Let's start with an informal style. We'll first frame the front of the house with taller plants anchoring the corners. For example, a shade tree like an ash on one side and an ornamental tree like a flowering crab on the other. Not exactly symmetrical, but that's typical of informal landscapes. By the way, spreading these out a couple of feet will make a small house seem a bit bigger. The entry would be framed on each side with a group of taller deciduous shrubs like mock orange, reaching a height of five to six feet. Now a series of medium-sized shrubs along the foundation would cover any exposed block. One option would be spreading junipers, maturing at a height of three to four feet. Again, we don't want these too orderly to keep that informal style. To finish the beds off, we would use a series of short shrubs, like spirea, mostly to round off the outside edges. And then we'd fill in here with a mass planting of perennials, like a stilby. The finished plan shows how carefully planned the informal layout really is, despite the random look that it presents. Notice how we built each bed with the short plants in the front, the medium plants in the middle, and the taller plants in the back. Now that's a basic rule you should follow to keep all your plantings visible from the front. Now we'll take the same basic house plan and treat the landscape a bit more formally. We're starting here with a low formal hedge. Alpine current would be a nice choice, trimmed in this case to a height of two feet. We'd want to see pretty straight lines and square corners here, nothing rounded or curved. We'd frame the entry with a pair of upright conical evergreens, possibly techni arbovitae. Along the foundation, we'd continue the geometrical sequence with a globe-shaped medium-sized shrub. One option would be a Japanese yew. For color, we'd fill in the middles of the beds with tall perennials that would be visible above the hedge. Daylilies come to mind for that. To finish this treatment, we'd anchor the corners of the house with a pair of ornamental trees, maybe a couple of flowering crabs, pruned to hold a globe shape. Well, this example shows the main features of a formal layout, straight lines, geometrical shapes, and a sense of balance or symmetry. We're not landscape designers, so we're not saying like these are great plans or anything, not at all. We're just trying to give you an idea of what to think about as you start jotting down your landscape plans.